Picture this, a massive crane rolling up to a damaged rocket booster, engineers with cutting torches ready, and just 48 hours to turn a setback into the foundation for the next breakthrough. That's exactly what happened at SpaceX last week, and the speed of their response tells us everything about where this company is headed. Welcome back to the channel, space enthusiasts! Today we're diving into the whirlwind week at SpaceX that saw them dismantle Booster 18, push forward on Booster 19, hit a mind-blowing Falcon 9 milestone, and witness NASA stack the Artemis 2 spacecraft that'll carry humans back toward the moon. From twisted metal to triumph, this is the story of how SpaceX turns obstacles into opportunities. Let's jump in! So let's talk about what happened with Booster 18. After the incident, engineers quickly assessed the damage and reached a sobering conclusion. This booster's flying days were over. But here's the thing about SpaceX. They don't waste time mourning. They extract every ounce of data they can and move on. By the afternoon of November 21st, a massive crane was already on site at the Massey facility. The next morning, teams were cutting. And we're not talking about careful, weeks-long disassembly. By the afternoon of November 22nd, major cutting operations were in full swing. The approach was surgical. SpaceX split the booster into two primary sections, the liquid oxygen tank and the methane tank. Why this way? Two reasons. First, it simplified analysis. Each section could be studied independently. Second, the damage wasn't uniform. Different parts suffered different levels of destruction, so separating them made sense. Then things got even more interesting. The methane tank was divided into three smaller pieces. The forward section, near the hot staging hardware, appeared to have suffered the least damage. Speculation among observers suggests SpaceX might preserve that section as a reference for building future prototypes while scrapping the more heavily deformed parts. The liquid oxygen tank told a different story. The damage there was more severe, yet interestingly, it wasn't cut further. Instead, on the morning of November 23rd, workers were spotted welding on the tank dome. The consensus? They were adding temporary lifting points. See, the original lifting hardware was located on the forward section, the part that had been removed. Without it, there was no safe way to move the LOX tank. Problem identified, problem solved. What's remarkable here isn't just the speed, it's the clarity of purpose. SpaceX didn't pause to overthink. They had a plan, executed it flawlessly, and extracted maximum value from a vehicle that could no longer fly. Now here's where things get exciting. While B-18 was being dismantled, work on Booster 19 was already beginning. According to SpaceX's latest updates, the Starbase team plans to have the next Super Heavy booster fully stacked in December. We're talking potentially next week, folks. This aligns perfectly with the planned test campaign for the first Starship Block 3 vehicle and the associated ground systems. SpaceX has confirmed that the 12th Starship flight test remains targeted for the first quarter of 2026. Since we're in the final days of November, stacking could happen as early as the first week of December. Energetic and confident tone, medium fast pace, clear articulation, American accent, slight urgency, modern tech news anchor style. This suggests all the necessary sections are already prepared inside the Star Factory just waiting for their moment. For context, Booster 18 took nearly six months to complete. But that timeline was stretched by the introduction of new Version 3 upgrades and ongoing launches of the Version 2 variant. With more experience, increased urgency, and lessons learned, B-19 could come together far more quickly. A realistic estimate puts completion around early to mid-January. Here's the flexible part. The official launch window extends through the entire first quarter of 2026. That means SpaceX has breathing room. Cryogenic testing and static fires could begin in January or early February. Ship testing could even proceed first, since it doesn't require the main launch pad, and the newest ship is already complete, just waiting for the Massey site to finish cleanup operations. If everything accelerates smoothly, a February launch for Flight 12 seems entirely plausible. Mark your calendars, because 2026 is shaping up to be an absolutely wild year for Starship. 
But vehicles are only half the story. Let's talk infrastructure. On Pad 1, SpaceX has been refining the chopsticks, those massive mechanical arms that'll eventually catch returning boosters. After trimming the left arm and removing the landing rail, they've now done the same to the right arm. Both arms will likely be shortened in the near future. Why does this matter? By trimming the arms, the system becomes less bulky and easier to operate, with more room for precise movement. Remember, these chopsticks won't just lift vehicles, they'll catch them mid-air after flight. The version 3 upgrades will introduce even more significant changes. New landing rail configurations, improved catching pins, enhanced actuators, and refinements that'll set the new system apart from the older version. Over on Pad 2, things are even more dramatic. After days of adjustment work, the ship Quick Disconnect Arm, the QD, has been officially lifted into position and installed on the tower. This is huge. All major systems required for Pad 2 are now in place. Over the next few weeks, final small-scale installations will be completed, followed by comprehensive testing. And here's the cool part, the new QD on Pad 2 is a complete redesign compared to Pad 1. It's supported by a robust steel frame and features a white enclosed structure that resembles a crew access corridor, similar to what you'd see in Florida. This design offers far greater stability than the Pad 1 version, which relied on a tube-based structure and some rather improvised-looking support frames. The old setup made Pad 1's QD vulnerable during launch, especially as Starship rises past it under intense thrust, heat, vibration, and pressure. Pad 2's version is built to handle that punishment. Though it's worth noting, the current configuration appears to be two fixed segments, which reduces some flexibility. It's possible this is temporary and future additions will increase its range of motion. Now let's shift gears and talk about an absolutely bonkers achievement. At 2.53 a.m. Eastern on November 22nd, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida, carrying 29 payloads into orbit. Mission successful, satellites deployed, booster landed safely. Standard stuff for SpaceX these days, right? Except this was the 150th Falcon 9 launch of the year. Let that sink in. 150 launches. In modern spaceflight, many rockets struggle to launch once or twice per year. Reaching 10 flights annually is considered remarkable. SpaceX has turned high-frequency launches into routine operations. They're now just 20 launches away from their goal of 170 for the year. With the remaining days of November and the entire month of December ahead, they have a real shot at hitting that target. If they maintain their current pace, we might witness spaceflight history in the making again. Finally, let's talk about NASA's Artemis II mission, because this week brought major progress. NASA's Exploration Ground Systems team successfully lifted and integrated the Orion spacecraft on top of the Space Launch System rocket inside the Vehicle Assembly Building at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is a huge milestone for the mission plan to send astronauts around the moon in early 2026. Artemis II will be the first time humans travel toward the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972. The crew, Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, Christina Koch from NASA, and Jeremy Hansen from the Canadian Space Agency, will fly a hybrid free return trajectory, swinging around the moon and naturally returning toward Earth using gravity. During the roughly 10-day flight, they'll evaluate life support functions, spacecraft maneuvering, communication systems, and countless other operations required for future lunar landings. Orion's heat shield, the largest ever built for a crewed spacecraft, will protect them during re-entry at speeds nearing 25,000 miles per hour. This mission is the crucial stepping stone toward building a lasting human presence on and around the moon, enabling the Gateway Orbital Platform, long-term lunar surface systems, and eventually, Mars missions. So there you have it. From dismantling B-18 to stacking B-19, from launch pad upgrades to 150 Falcon 9 flights, and NASA preparing to send humans back toward the moon. SpaceX and the broader space industry are proving that setbacks are just setups for comebacks. What are your predictions for Flight 12? Drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this breakdown, smash that like button and subscribe to stay updated on all things space. Until next time, keep looking up.